going to do today, you might ask. All right. What? Alan, I'm having a blast with this class. And the nice thing is with, with four people in the class, you know, even if I, I do something really stupid or have an activity that just doesn't work, there's not a lot of people that are see it. Right? I mean, I suppose it's on YouTube, but, you know, I'm not so vain as to think that there's millions of people. My database class... My database lectures do get the most traffic. You know, you, know, you know why? And why? Because it only and if you type your name into YouTube, it auto completes Mike Seller's database. Right. Because, and, and actually, the one that I sent to you last week, I was I, had, I was doing a database for somebody, and I took you over to Seller for that class. I'm like, I gotta find like an answer to this. Right. And I was like YouTube. I'm like, and it just came right up. And <laughs> well, the opposite is true too. If you search for databases, I'm among the top couple yeah. of them. All right, we're going to do, uh, uh, we're going to have another activity, and I want to present a context first. I'm going to try to make this activity be a little more of a, uh, I'll give you some, some tools to use, and I'll coach through you, and you can work with each other, as opposed to working on it together. So that's why we're up here. We're up here, I'm going to introduce the activity. I'm going to go over some tools, and then we'll turn you loose, and, and we can work on things together. All right, the holiday season approaches, right? I, believe it or not, am nearly done with my Christmas shopping, all right? Well, my one daughter is going to San Francisco uh, for Christmas with her boyfriend, so I'm helping her pay for the plane ticket. So that, that one was, was an easy one. And my younger daughter, I really doubt she would watch one of my lectures on YouTube, but I won't say what I've got her, at least not uh, on recording, just in case she's using these techniques to try to figure it out. <laughs> but there was one pretty big thing she wanted, and it's like, might as well, you know? So, hey, so I'm done. One of, you know one of the biggest problems I had Christmas shopping, though, was? Well, you know, there's a pain for it, you know, <laughs> and all that, you know. One of the biggest problems, uh, and again, I, I've always had this problem. It isn't, it isn't one of those like, well, now that you're getting older kind of things, but I've always had this problem. And the problem was, where did I leave my car, right? Because especially when you go into, like, maybe a mall that you're not familiar with or one that's really, really crowded, you know, you tend to park in certain places, you know. Like, when I come here, I almost always park in one of, like, a handful of places. So I know where my car is. But if I go somewhere strange, you park your car, you go walk around for a while, get turned around, you come back like, where's my car again? You know? So this will be the Keanu Reeves Dude Where's My Car application. All right? We're going to write an application that's going to help people find their car or find anything else they want. And I actually have one of these. I wanted to, wanted to show it to you on my phone. I, uh, my phone battery is almost dead. And this tablet, I downloaded a stupid application. It doesn't seem to do anything. Uh, so I'll just describe it. Here's what we want. And we'll talk about how we're going to get there. Okay? Because I don't. this isn't a one-day thing. This will take at least, well, we'll see how long it will take. But I'm planning maybe two-ish weeks on this. That's my rough gut feel of it. But the application works like this. You have a button that sets location. So, for example, you're, you've parked your car, you get out of the car, you point the button so that it remembers where you are as of that point. All right? You then have another button that says, you know, show location, and ideally, it should work something like this. It should show you a map, you know, Google map thing, maybe showing you, like in this case, Elsie's campus, maybe the parking lot, and it should show you where your car is parked, and it show you where, should show you where you are. And it would be nice to show you the distance between these two, you know. 
You're 800 feet away. And then as you walk closer and closer and closer, it should tell you that you know, you're 750 feet away, you're, you're 700 feet away, and so on, until hopefully you spot your car. All right? So we're going to try to do something like that. All right? And we've talked a little bit, and we had an example last time that where I did geolocation, where I, um, what did I do? I don't know, you did something with it. You showed where we were. Yeah, we showed where we were, right. All right. And we looked at, we looked at the HTML5 geolocation object. All right. And we looked at a few different things. What I want to do now is I want to talk you through the strategy that we can take with this, all right, that, that I'm suggesting you take with this. And I want to talk about, first of all, the first piece of this puzzle of what we want to do. This, in my mind, is a reasonable approach to take it. And you can take it or leave it, but I'm thinking taking it is probably a good suggestion because I, I have thought this through and played around with it a bit. My suggestion would first to be do to do this. All right. Have a button that when you click on it, it remembers where you are. to find where you are and remembers it. We'll talk about how it's going to remember it in a minute here. Then, there should be a button that when you click it, it shows you how far you are from where you set the location. So, again, and, and some of this, I was playing with this last week. Some of this, you got to remember that GPSs aren't necessarily completely, like, accurate. You know, it's the better phone, the better GPS system you have, the more accuracy you're going to get and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, if I was parked in that parking lot and I walked from here to the corner, you know, the, the distance should decrease. You know, it might not be exactly right, but it should decrease. So get that piece working. If you don't have a mobile device, I can give you one, all right, for you to use if you don't have a smartphone that has a GPS and all that in there. Uh, I have those. Um, you can play around with it. This obvious, this needs to be on a web server for you to access it via the smartphone, so you should put it up on CIS SQL, all right. And I've given you, I, I have some tools out there for you to use. First of all, where to save the information. Now, in larger applications, you may actually save this information like in a database. You can maybe write it to a server or even have a small, um, well, you could do a lot of different things, but like you could write it to a server and save it in a database. In our case, we're going to store it in a cookie. All right? Going to store it in a cookie. Nice thing about that is, is that you can. Um, you can, uh, you know, close your browser, open it up again later on, and it will still remember where you were, provided you don't hit the set location button again. It will remember that. It will store that value. Uh, for example, I was playing around with this Thursday, I think. Yeah, Thursday. And I drove down to Columbus on Saturday. And I pressed the button, you know, I registered where I was. I think I, I tested that corner of the building, you know, I, I set my location. I drove to Columbus, pressed the button, and it said I was something like 100,000 feet away or something like that. So it, it did work, you know, I remembered where I was. So it, it did work, and it, and it was accurate. So I have some code to help you storing cookies, all right? I also have a function that gives the distance between two locations in feet. The locations being expressed as latitude and longitude points. 
So if you get a latitude and longitude, and you have a second latitude and longitude to compare it against, I have a function that you just have to call, and it will return how many feet. All right? Again, um, I took it and adapted it from someone else. Someone else didn't. I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but I, I played around with it to get it to work. I think I had to do some metric conversion and some other stuff uh, to make it work. All right. It's not uncommon to, to get this, to create an application based on tools and, and be given parts of the tools. So I think this is a good learning experience. And you can really focus on the part that's important. You know, this isn't a trig class, so doing all those trig functions to calculate the distance, you know, there's a function to do that. All right? You're not interested on the code on that level. Someone else has done it for you. And in, in many cases, you'll have that or you'll find a script to do something or some open source script to do something. And then you can go and focus in on the part of it that's distinct, like hooking everything up together. So the strategy would be this. When you click the set location button, it should invoke those objects that we saw last time. It should invoke a function that's going to go and get the location using the geolocation object. When it gets the location, it should store it in a cookie. All right? The second button, when you click that, it should go out and grab the location again. When it grabs the location, it should take and compare it, it, you now have the two latitudes and longitudes. One that's stored in a cookie, one you grab when you press the button. You should call this function to get the distance in feet and then display the results on the page. Um, the example of using the geolocation object was the example that we did last Wednesday. So if you go out and look uh, in Angel, it should say something like... Um, example from 1030 or something like that. Here's the new tools that I provided you. tools I provided you uh, is here, are here. Under lectures, files for 11.4 lectivity. I know I'm going to like try to play that word in words with friends or something and it's going to reject and I'm going to be really annoyed. Or I'm going to drop that into a con regular conversation and people are going to like think I'm crazy. But now I can't not say it. All right. I provide two things for you. And one of them isn't even my thing. It's a jQuery thing. All right. So let's look. There is a, you can get rid of the Mac OS folder. There is a jQuery cookie.js. Both of these are .js files. This is something that is an extension or a, a plug-in, I forget the exact term, that someone built for jQuery. And we can, you can find out and you can see who built it by looking at the comments. So if you want any documentation about how this works, go to this URL and it will show you documentation on how it works. This is jQuery code, a jQuery plug-in that, that does cookie things. All right. So I didn't write this. You can use this with jQuery Mobile as well, by the way. So you don't have to use jQuery. You can use jQuery Mobile. Thing is, is you have to put this after your jQuery Mobile stuff. So in your head section, you know you have those CSS files and, and a, a JavaScript file. You put this guy after the jQuery stuff. All right. Now. This code I created. And it consists of 
two functions, one of which creates a cookie based on a position object. So if you get a position object, it will create a cookie that stores the latitude and longitude in the cookie. So you don't even have to create the cookie, all right, uh, do the low-level stuff. Just call this function and give it the position object. The position object is what, if you remember, the geolocation object returns when you say get position. And it creates a cookie called lat and lon and expires in seven days. So I guess when I said you could close a browser window and open it, within seven days you could do that. You can make that longer if you want. The other function I have <coughs> takes a latitude, a longitude, a second latitude, and a second longitude, and returns the distance in feet. Again, this is a function that I found online that I just tweaked, I think, to make it work in feet. Oh, and I did some conversion between degrees and radians. All right. And I'm fairly certain this works. <laughs> okay. Um, as you're going through this, if it, for example, tells you you're 10 miles from your car when you walked from here to the doorway, then, then maybe we can look at it. But I'm pretty sure this, this works. I'm pretty sure the coding is correct. And so in addition to that, we have the lecture sample files from 1030. which <coughs> does what? Finds our location. Finds your location and just spits out the latitude and longitude. So hint, hint, this would be a good starting point to take and adapt that and incorporate the logic from the other two things. So that's our first step. Take this, incorporate the logic to set your location, store it in a cookie, click a second button, grab your second location, calculate the distance, and display it. Now, interesting thing here is if you run this on a desktop machine, all right, what should the distance be always? Zero, right? Because your IP address ain't moving, all right? So, for example, if you went down here in lab and got everything going, all right, incorporated all the code in, uploaded it to the web server, then accessed it through Chrome or some browser that supports geolocation, and click save location, click show distance, it should show zero feet. So that's kind of a way to sort of calibrate this and make sure it works. I would get that going first with no syntax errors, nothing like that, then start playing with it on the mobile device. And again, if you don't have a mobile device, much like an attorney in the court of law, one will be provided for you. All right, any questions about this? Let's go. What I probably will do on, what's the next time we meet, Wednesday, is take inventory of how far we have gotten. All right? And then decide what we're going to do from there. So in the class today, beginning of class Wednesday, I'll sort of look and see where we are. If everyone is at the point where they got this, with flying colors, then we go on to part two. All right. So that one function 